Well, welcome to chapel. Here we are once again in our summer semester at the Kaleo Institute of 2014. The time is just going by so rapidly. Today we're going to complete Psalm 23, finally. I have really enjoyed your posts. They have been wonderful. I always get so blessed through each and every one of them. God really speaks through you to me and hopefully I to you. That's what it's all about. That's why it's important. This portion of the Kaleo Institute to us is the spiritual part where we can connect with each other via the internet. God bless the internet. There's a lot of bad things on it, but there's also a lot of good things on it. I'm sure you'll all say amen to that. But let's take a look at Psalm 23, and we're going to read through that whole psalm today. And then I'm going to touch on another scripture in the New Testament, and we're going to talk a little bit in conclusion of the life of David. Let's go to Psalm 23, though, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guards me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a powerful song that David wrote here. He authored this. It's amazing. We could just live off of this one particular psalm, couldn't we? It's just that full and rich. And in looking at that psalm, once again we get a picture of David's life. We talked about him being a shepherd boy. He understood what shepherding was all about. He understood who the great shepherd was through his own experience shepherding the sheep, shepherding the flock, going through the wilderness, and all the different experiences that he went through with the sheep. Now, what I would like for you to do for me is to go to Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 5, and we're going to be looking at verse 10. We're going to start there, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. Verse 10 in 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 10 says, After you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I believe this is what God did for King David. I believe that's why he was able also to write the psalm, also because of the tender, loving goodness and loving kindness that God showed him. You know, David did some wonderful things. We know he, he destroyed the uh, he, he destroyed the giant. He killed the giant, and it goes on and on and on. All the little stories in there of David. They're they're wonderful. But we also need to remember the other side of King David, of King David. King David, we know, had problems before he became king with Saul and was tormented by Saul. And Saul, we know, was tormented by him. But he went through a lot. His life was endangered. He almost died a few times in that situation. But then he goes on to become the king, as we all know, and he falls in love with Bathsheba, someone he has no right going after, but he does. And he commits adultery with her. Now he decides, what am I going to do? I've got to make this right. He has Uzziah, Bathsheba's husband, killed on the front lines. He puts him on the front lines of the soldiers and has him intentionally killed. David was a bad boy. But David understood the faithfulness, the loving kindness, and the goodness of God. He understood that God forgave him. He understood that he could still go on as the king. He understood how it was to receive God's grace and mercy. And this particular chapter in 1 Peter talks about the shepherding of God's people in the midst of suffering. And that's what God did with David, with the things that David went through. Charles Spurgeon said, The Lord gets 
his best soldiers out of the highlands of affliction. Goes back to that scripture too. After you've suffered a little while, I want you to know that no matter what you're going through in life right now, whatever it's been or whatever you're going to face, I want you to remember like King David is telling us here that God is faithful. God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. That no matter what dark situation you may be in, no matter how badly you've messed up in the past or you may mess up in the future, God is there to forgive you. He can forgive adultery. He can forgive fornication. He can, he can forgive pornography, if that's what you're into. He can forgive all of those things. And you know what? A lot of those sins I've just touched on, maybe some of you have experienced lying, cheating. There's so many, many, many. We've sinned somewhere and don't say that you haven't. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we also must remember that God's a forgiving God. That if you'll turn away and you'll ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you over and over and over again. Not just once. What do you think the cross was all about? What do you think the why God had to send that final lamb the Lamb of God who was slain to forgive the sins of the world. Man couldn't do it, no matter how hard we tried. And David understood this, and he says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. David knew that the safe place was under the shepherd's wing, under the shepherd's arm, under the shepherd's, what do we say, staff, however you want to say it, however God, in the typology that we see, is represented. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you know what? No matter what suffering you're going through, rejoice in it because God is a good God and He will bring you through to the other side. You may be going, coming out on the other side on something right now. Or maybe it's about to happen. I don't know, but I do know that God's Word is true. This is a true story. This is not fiction. This is as non-fictitious as you're going to get. This is the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And I'm just telling you what God's Word says. So therefore, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Not just here on earth, but as we enter into the next life, we shall dwell with the Lord in His heavenly house. I look forward to that day. I think about it quite often. People say, well, that's kind of sadistic. No, it's not. It's reality. It's my hope. It's the hope of glory. Let me pray with you today. Let's just pray. Maybe you're going through a situation right now, and you're saying, I feel like I'm never going to come out of this. I feel like I'm never coming to the other side. I feel like my bills are never going to be paid. I feel like my children are never going to stop rebelling. I feel like the sickness is never going to leave me. I feel alone. I feel unwanted. Whatever it may be, God is the God that you need to go to right now. Let, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us, that you are leading us, just as Psalm 23 says, that your goodness and loving kindness shall follow us all the days of our lives. And as David said often, David said often, that he would dwell in the house of the Lord. And that's what he was looking for eternally. Lord, I just thank you right now. And I ask you to bless each and every student listening. That you would touch each and every one of their hearts. That you would encourage them this day to know that you are on their side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, my question. Homework. How has God shown you his loving kindness and mercy? How has he shown you that? Maybe one particular incident, maybe something in your life that you experienced, maybe just happened just now, maybe after you listen to this, whatever it may be. Would you do that for me? Write that down. And thank you so much, and God bless you, and looking forward to seeing you in chapel again. Thank you.